Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Roberts, and I'm an engineering manager at Expedia um, in Brisbane, previously known as Woody or the Woody Group, um, down at Milton, just down the road here. Um, I've got a background in front end development and just like JavaScript, always following what's going on. And so tonight, I'd just like to uh, present to you some of the um, findings I've been looking into around the service worker and just some ideas around offline first. It's just an introduction, so I'd like to kind of go through that. And as part of my introduction, I'd just like to say that I guess I'm um, a bit gracefully degraded tonight with a little bit of a cold as well. Um, so if I have to take a of water or a cough or whatever, apologies. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So before I kind of move on with my slides, what I would like to do is actually just go offline. Um, I've got a very small demo here that I think will set the context for the rest of what's coming up. If you can basically see, or you may not, it doesn't matter if you can't see that right at the back, but basically at the moment I'm online. So the browser saying, yes, it's true, I'm online. Um, if I disable the Wi-Fi and, you know, this is basically just the browser catching up, but... Can you zoom in on the terminal? You can press command yep. while it's on Yep. Yeah, basically it's saying true, I'm online, and false, I'm now offline. Um, what I've got going on behind the scenes on this slide deck, just to reveal slide deck, and it's, um, it's just a little bit of a script that's running Service Worker, setting up a worker in the background, and caching and setting up a bit of a fallback for some of the assets. Um, <laughs> Don't mind me. No worries. Um, yeah, so... It's a, it's a bit of a simple demo and, and plain, so I won't go into the details. What I'll, do through, what I'll do later is I'll go through the code so you can kind of see how it's all working. But basically, if I refresh now, um, my service worker has kicked in, and what should happen is you get a, an offline fallback for an image. So what we're seeing here is a very old-school unicorn. Um, it's kind of my offline fallback for my demo. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, what I would like to do now is go online. So you kind of got to set the scene here. You're travelling on the train, perhaps. You've gone through a tunnel. You're offline, so you get the fallback, which was cached previously on your mobile device or whatever device you're using. Um, but now you come out of the train tunnel, and boom, you have the internet with all its um, bells and whistles, and I guess the latest updates for whatever you were looking at at that time on the website. So that's a very simple demo. I'm glad that worked. It was um, actually a little bit, you know, it's, it's what this presentation is on. Um, and I'll go through about, go through the code later and show you what's kind of driving just that logic. Um, but first I'd just like to talk about the concept of offline first, and I'll go through this quickly because I know that Pete's are coming. But essentially, um, Offline first is a form of progressive enhancement. So you think about it in terms of developing websites, which is primarily what I do, um, I have been doing for a while now. We think about progressive enhancement in terms of features. You know, what, what's the basic features we need, our user needs to experience? If they don't have the best browser, then maybe we can you know, cull some of those features. Um, what sort of devices that are our users using? You know, they're on a really old machine, maybe this animation is not built for that, so I'll, I'll make sure that you know, I start from the basic, I would set the foundation um, really well in my website so that I can build on top of that. Um, screen size, again, mobile first. So um, optimising for the smallest screen real estate and building up from there. And essentially what this talk is on and what um, the offline first mentality is, is, it, is it, it is that progressive enhancement but for the network. So we often don't think about, we think about all these optimizations once you get to the browser, but what happens before that? Wednesday mail, Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone else sat on the train for five hours on Friday, but that's another story. Um, essentially offline first is assuming the worst with the network connection. Assuming, assuming the worst with um, yeah, any of the experience for the user and making sure that they, you prioritize the content, um, the one message for your page. Trains, planes, um, and the Brisbane North Side, which I, hit, I represent here tonight. So. There you go. Um, so I guess that's a bit of an introduction to what offline first is. And 
the service worker is what I see as a tool that will enable this me uh, methodology for building a website. So what I thought I'd do is I'd go, um, let's see what Google says about the service worker and what it is, because I, I don't know if anyone would really know what that is. I didn't know really about it. I, I've had a few uh, buzzwords floating around Twitter, but I looked up the definition. And so the definition is the service worker is a generic entry point for the event-driven background processing in a web platform that is extensible by other specifications. Um, I think it's pizza time now, isn't it? What? <laughs> um, that's not very clear. That was my joke. So. <laughs> uh, onto the serious stuff. The service worker is a new browser API that has the potential to enable developers to build offline web apps, as you can read. Um, it has things like push, push messaging, um, background notifications or sync, um, and cache control. Now, the first two features there, um, not really ready yet, so I can't demonstrate anything or you know, this, all of these things are very new, but what I'd like to touch on is just that cache control tonight and um, yeah, how you can use Service Worker or the API within some browsers right now. Um, if you follow Jake Archibald on Twitter or a few of the um, front dev team, they're, they're kind of speaking about this at the moment and um, he's got a great website, is Service Worker ready? Um, I think it's .com, but that's the, where it resolves to. And essentially it has a whole heap of resources about um, where the API is at, the status, um, yeah, a whole heap of other further reading and material which is um, great for learning about what this is. Um, the Service Worker is made up of a whole heap of other new technologies or new APIs within the, the browser and a lot of this, um, I guess the disclaimer is that a lot of this is being um, driven by Chrome. So a lot of these new features you kind of need to rely on that. Um, leading browser at the moment to use the service worker. Um, the service worker is a network proxy, so it sits in between um, you know, your DOM or your website and the actual network layer. So you've you just got a bit of a paradigm sh shift in terms of um, you know, the concepts that it'll bring to um, building websites. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to do is just go back to um, the code for the actual slides, so I'm going meta here. Um, and I just wanted to touch on just the code that was driving that kind of fallback for the image. So I've done a few things before um, you get to this point. I've registered for a service worker, you know, started one up, it's um, gone through the install, I've set up a cache. But what happens here is what's happening when the browser intercepts um, that network um, response or request. So this script here is running on the service worker thread. Um, it's looking for any fetch event. So anything that's requested from the document all the way through the assets of the slide is firing through here. Um, essentially what I was doing with the, the I think, can anyone see that by the way? Just checking, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, the thing that I was doing with the um, Unicorn demonstration was essentially intercepting or checking to see, you know, is the request for an online unicorn and using a bit of a cheat here but saying is the navigator online. Um, a lot of the demonstrations that I've seen to do this kind of concept or to, you know, test the network, um, to do it properly you'll probably use, you know, try catch methodology or some sort of timeout to say, you know, actually it's taken too long, potentially now show the fallback. But I just wanted to keep this simple to say, true or false, is it online or offline? Um, there's a lot more to it, you know. There's the great network and the no network, but there's a lot of a lot of different types of network experiences in between. Um, so enough of that, but essentially, if the user's online and I'm asking for a unicorn, show the offline unicorn. Um, if that's, you know, if the user is online and that's um, false, then what happens is, um, it falls back to this script, which actually looks for every book. It's going through every request. If the response has been previously cached by the service worker, then return that cache. Otherwise, fall back to fetching it from the network, which is what would happen if you first the first time <coughs> excuse me, you visited that site. So with this little script here running, you know, um, 
I've actually got my slides running in just a Python web app or something. If I actually kill that, these all should still run. So that's the magic. Um, I hope that you know kind of demonstrates how I got that working. Just touching on that lifestyle, I mentioned registration, installation, and watching the network. Um, what what happens when you kind of want to start using a service worker on a page is you actually register online. So this happens on your um, website. I just make the dream. Take that in. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so you register for a service worker. This registers the scope for your service worker or for the, um, I guess, the scope of the assets that it can control or intercept. Um, just a, I guess, a bit of a gotcha is if you register within a folder, say, called JS, the actual service worker thread will only have access to anything under that folder. Um, you can define the scope when you are registering as a separate parameter, but um, yeah, you need to do that if you want to control all of the assets. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, installation is kind of what is kicked off next by the service worker. Now this jumps to the actual script that is inside serviceworker.js. So this um, little guy kicks off when the installation event is fired by the service worker. This is now using the caches API to register a cache called demo cache version one, um, which says cache all these assets or add these to the manifest. Um, I guess just one other thing to note with the caches API is it's not ready for use. So there's actually a polyfill that I had to use to get this working. Um, yeah. And then finally, which is the script that I went through before, you can add um, another event listener that looks for any kind of fetch call from page to the network, and the service worker will intercept that. Yeah, and I guess, um, I hope that was interesting, but I just wanted to touch on a few pro tips that I've learned. First of all, um, you can only run this under HTTPS unless you're running in localhost. Um, this is because obviously you can intercept network requests and you probably don't want to allow that on a non secure site. Um, again, it's um, by default, um, you cannot run it cross domain. So you can enable this through the normal ways, but um, generally it's specifically for um, the one website. Um, I just wanted to go over the, the dev tools, which are only at the moment available in Chrome. Um, though I do know that they're playing in Firefox and potentially IE. Um, but at the moment, there's two different types of dev tools that you can use to inspect that separate um, worker. There is the inspect Chrome. Um, just zoom that way. So there's the inspect URL, which just shows you quite a few things, but it should be. Uh, click on that. Oh, I killed it. Um, that should restart once I refresh. The other thing too is that Chrome's cleaning up these threads in the background, so potentially it just removed it because it was like, oh, don't need that anymore. Um, yeah, so that's the registration process. But essentially now you can see, uh, this is my worker that's running in the background. Um, this is the guy that's doing all the work of intercepting the network. I can kill him. Um, okay. I, I can inspect um, what's going on. And this is where it's really helpful to the, the development because um, I can log out what's going on in that um, worker. And if you go back to my code, um, these console logs here are what's kind of showing within the script. So things like, you know, I'm just saying which what asset is being called, um, and the errors that's happening, you know, it's kind of reach this um, URL. Um, yeah, so it's helpful for development. And the other um, development tool that Chrome has is this service worker internals, which shows a little bit more about the status of each worker. So it'll tell you um, the previous threads that have been uh, killed or stopped, and it'll just allow you to kind of see what's going on. I think this will disappear very shortly in Chrome because um, it's really for, probably for their benefit to see um, you know, while they're developing this feature. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's currently only working in Chrome, but there is plans, um, I know in Firefox, you know, they've started implementing some of the things and 
I think if you look at the Youth Service Worker Ready website, um, Internet Explorer is up to the interested stage, so that it's shown some sort of interest in implementing this feature, um, which is good. Um, a lot of these resources are kind of what's helped me just get my head around what's going on. Um, Serviceworker.org, a lot of um, what Jake Archibald um, talks about at the moment is on this. A lot of his presentations are you know, way over mine, but they cover a lot of this in, in depth. And he's put together a really good demo called um, Trains to Thrill, which shows the offline capability of caching. And it goes um, right into how what's, what's um, potentially available at the moment. Like I said, this space will probably or potentially um, you know, explode to a whole heap of new features that enable offline first uh, development. So thank you very much. Um, do you have any questions about my demo or service worker or Expedia or myself? Thanks. Um, when you're inspecting the service worker, the Chrome Dev Tools, could you still go to the other tabs to get like the network tab and the source tab? For yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can so yeah, you can see what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, once it's called. Yeah. Cool. Um, the other thing that does show up just uh, you know along those lines is. Um, at the moment, I'm. I think I've killed my um, presentation script. It's, you can actually get some information out of you know, the browser or the, the website to tool to say this is coming from the service worker. It's just returning at 200. Yeah. It's all pretty buggy though at the moment. Um, this is dev tool that you're telling you the wrong thing or crashing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you mentioned something about being able to test the network. Can, is it possible, I don't know if it's part of service work or not, but possible to like, test things like that, like the network metered or something like that? Because maybe some scenarios maybe you want know, to expect the official display that uses a uh, um, download uh, amount of data that uh, download at the moment or not flow there. Yeah. Yeah, that's another awesome um, potential for it. Um, and initially I thought you could, and that's what I thought the point of this was, but getting into it, I don't think there is, you know, I don't think it's as clear as that. Um, the examples I saw that really spoke to actually testing the network were about basically trying a connection, giving it a timeout, to saying, you know, try this asset. If it doesn't respond within such an amount of time, pull back to the cache. Um, there wasn't anything about metering that I saw. But I do remember, and, Sorry about this, but um, I do remember seeing a demo initially, which maybe was misleading, but I thought that you could look up, I don't know if anyone knows, but I thought you could look up the network status. Yeah, there, is a, there is a connection API, but basically yeah, it's so that's you're on 3G, Wi-Fi, or things like that, but it doesn't go into that granularity yeah. and that spec yet. But we can kind of see what kind of connection they have, like GPRS, um, 3G, 4G, you can get that and then you've got that. I guess it's kind of along the lines of, um, you know, when you're targeting mobile first development, if you're saying, oh, you're on an iPhone, so you, it's kind of a bit anti that pattern to, to an extent. Um, I know that this, you know, I guess I cheated, but I use this um, navigator.online. It doesn't really tell you that much. And if you if you have a connection and it's true, but it doesn't mean you've got the internet. It just means you've got connected to something. So it's, yeah, it's not the best way, but um, yeah, there are some good examples on that. Jake Archibald. He's trained to tool and does it. Could you use it for something other than assets? For example, an API request? <coughs> yeah, definitely. Anything, really. Um, the actual worker itself doesn't distinguish. Um, so, yeah, there is, and probably um, it would have been a better example, but um, yeah, the example that I saw was caching a request to Flickr and actually saving, you know. A response and then just serving that to the user if they were offline so they kind of get the last view version and just a you know JSON response type, type thing. Um, so yeah definitely you can cache anything. Um, more questions? Cool. Thanks very much guys. Um, one final note. Um, at, at Expedia we're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Come and see me if you're interested. We've got quite a few roles happening. Pretty exciting over there. Um, yeah, thanks very much.